All right, here we are. Um, would we like to play first? Yeah, probably. Yeah, this looks great. Well, that's nice of him. So we have a Voyaging Seder, which is going to power out a... Uh, yeah, that was probably the wrong land to play. Uh, going to power out a turn three Insatiable Harpy. I mean, I guess there's not really that many... So basically, if I play a Swamp and I draw a uh, Farika's Cure, <laughs> I can... Uh, I can kill his one drop, but like, what one drop am I really going to kill here? I would rather just play this, so. Anyway, it's important to give yourself the option, I suppose. Make a harpy. Next turn, well, if we draw a land, I'll probably just play Minotaur and, and Scorpion and then save Miss Cutter for the next turn. If we don't, I might just run it out there. It's a 4-4 with haste. Definitely don't care about this card. Eh, we drew a land, though. So I think I'll still wait a turn. This way I get to get in for three here. Set up proper defense with Felhide Minotaur and then defense for down the line with said Scorpion. Maybe even attacking with these guys next turn if he doesn't come up with something good. And then we can make a 5-5 five, five Miscutter Hydra and just bash him. Hopefully he doesn't have Disciple of Phoenix here. It wouldn't be the end of the world, but it would be pretty annoying. Halt the proceedings nicely. All right, well, he had a Disciple, but it was a different one. Now I have an interesting decision. If I play the miscutter hydra, I have to. I can send it in, but he can trade it. If I wait a turn, then he can't. But I still think it's worth it because if I trade my one miscutter hydra for both of his guys, then it clears away for all these other dudes on the ground. So I think that's okay. And if he doesn't block it, then he's taking five damage. So that's pretty good too. I think he'll probably just double block here, though. No, well, he's not. All right, that's fairly good news for us. I mean, he needs to come up with something to get in the way of this thing eventually. And hopefully we can keep pecking away with this in the air. God, that's a nasty picture. He could play like a Nessian Asp here. Wouldn't really do much. I could still just hit him for five. Well, he plays nothing. Um, he could have any color here, so that's a little awkward. Um, I think it's worth it, though, just to kill that thing. It gets in two extra damage from the spell, and then it gets in two extra, uh, three extra damage on the ground as well. So it's like two, three, four, five. It's like a five life point swing by killing that thing. Puts him to one if he has nothing. All right, he's got something. Could just have like a divine verdict or something that he's splashing. Oh, he's got a uh, Lash of the Whip. 
Oh. Thank you, Slash. Oh, Boon Cedar. Okay, well, Boon Cedar's not very good here. He can get greedy and block our Voyaging Cedar. That's what he's going to do, but man, he takes nine here. I have multiple lethal threats now. So he needs something pretty darn amazing. Like, just killing this doesn't do it. All right. So we got there. Um, and our opponent looks to be in similar colors to us. Uh, Hunt the Hunter should come in. Shredding Winds probably shouldn't. Stone Charter Warrior, probably I don't need. Maybe I should switch it in, though, just for, like, this or maybe Artisan Sorrow or something. Uh, the thinking is that, so if I'm going to play Hunt the Hunter, I need green creatures. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then I could add another one, though, and, th and th this kind of combos off, too. So I think I should do that. Um, I'll cut Cavern Lampad just because I don't know if it's going to be able to get in as often. And then maybe like a Flesh Mad Steed. All right, let's try this. Uh, so we get turn two Freakas Cure, turn three Courser or Read the Bones. That sounds fantastic to me. I enjoy, will enjoy this thoroughly. So if you play something relevant like a Voyaging Seder or something here, then we'll just kill it. Uh, he's got a present, so it doesn't matter. Uh, but we're still going to play a second Swamp just because we want to keep Freakas Cure up. Maybe get something here. What has you? Felhide Minotaur. All right, so not going to get that one, but uh, that's okay. We will play a Nessian Courser. So Read the Bones is going to be a refill card for us. I mean, we have stuff to do for the most part here. I don't think that we need to to kill this with Artist and Sorrow. We haven't really seen enough of his deck to know the answer to that question, but... We have seen a Boon Seder. Well, there we go. Oh, he's going to attack. All right. Uh, we draw an Insatiable Harpy. This is an interesting situation. What I'd like to do is just kill this thing with Artisan Sorrow. But I really don't like the idea of playing a land, attacking, and passing the turn, and then just sort of getting blown out here. Like, if he just... Actually, I can't even attack. So the line is play a line, play a land, go. He has to attack into us to get value. If we do, we get sick value. I mean, to be fair, we get really good value. But if he doesn't fall for it, then we do nothing for the turn. And that's like very tough pill to swallow. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to attack him. And I'm going to play Insatiable Harpy. And I'm just going to curve out on him. And basically, like, my Insatiable Harpy uh, makes his Felhide Minotaur a 2-whatever. And if he holds it back to try to block it, then I can attack with Nessian Courser, kill the Leaf Crown Dryad with Artisan Sorrow, and kind of get him. All right, he's going to keep pounding here. But, I mean, the, the fact is we have a really nice line here, because if he does this, I can attack first main phase next turn. If he untaps it or whatever I can artisan sorrow or something but I can also just play an asp and that's just going to like shore it up pretty nicely here Let's see what he comes up with for his turn though because this could obviously change our, our plan significantly Erebos so now I can't gain life so my insatiable harpy doesn't do anything huh my Farika's Cure gets, gets a little bit worse. Uh, that's pretty good. Yeah, all right. So let's attack for five. And then let's just play that Nessian Asp. This seems fine. I mean, it blocks the Felhide Minotaur. It makes him have something. This is annoying, though, because we do have actually life gain in our hand here, so, and on board. Huh. 
Hopefully he doesn't have... Oh, well, that's not bad. It doesn't actually still get this thing active, though. That's the good news. He also doesn't have an attack here at all, so... Alright. This thing is going to be very annoying, though. We're going to really need to make sure we monster assist at the first opportunity. So I think maybe we just read the bones here. And just make sure we hit our land drop. Uh, and we're going to hit one this turn, but I mean hit one for next turn. So I can just make this thing huge. I need to be able to block a 5-7. Yeah. Let's read some bones. Sedge Scorpion Lash of Z-Whip. It's both good magic cards. Hmm. I want Lash of the Whip. Do I want a Scorpion? I mean, he's going to start grinding us down with this thing pretty pretty quickly. Just start paying two life and drawing cards. I can get rid of this, and then I can start attacking him pretty freely. Yeah, I'm going to put this one on the bottom. All right, we hit a land. Sort of what we wanted. I, I just really want to get Baleful Eidolon on this thing. Yeah, I'm just going to pass for now, I think. I mean, I can attack with the Asp. He probably blocks here, and then I can freak his cure. But, like, I've got an answer to the, that already. Oh, he's just got another merchant here? Two, four. Yeah, we're just dead if that's the case. Two, four, five, six. Yeah, we'd just be straight up dead. All right. You did it. Um, that's annoying, but I don't know that we really have much of an answer for that kind of thing. We didn't get any, yeah, we just don't really have anything to fight that. So, okay. I accept this and then we'll just move on here. All right, we will play first. This looks like a nice hand. Not a ton of uh, beef to go into right now with Voyaging Seder, but I think we'll be happy we have it. It also fixes our mana. Yeah, this is a nice little one, two, three curve that we get to get on him, and we also have a combat trick to back it up, so pretty good. Plus, if we draw a four drop, we can just play it. Bell flight line, sure. I think we're just going to attack with both, actually. Our mana's fine. We've got enough stuff to cast almost everything in our deck, so a Voyaging Seder loses a bit of value here. Yep, of course you can. All right, he's going to read the bones now. <clears throat> Probably just have to attack with these two again. I, I don't want to trade here, and I know he'll he'll snap trade. So we could also just find one of our Freakas cures. Baleful Eidolon. Baleful Eidolon, you're interesting. Not that interesting though. Yeah, I'm just gonna attack with these two guys. And just say go. Yep, 
Interesting. Don't know why he cares. I mean, if he wanted to get that off the table, he could just trade. But he didn't want to do that. Now I'm going to trade one of these things off. Don't care which one, really. So he takes five here, and then we can merchant him for three. So, yeah, we're, we're working our way up the ladder here, but we're not in a great position, to be honest, because we're basically out of cards, and our opponent has 17 billion in his hand. Hopefully he just has, like, a god or something like that, doesn't do anything. All right, he's going to have a gray merchant here. Or a disciple. Um, I think I can just... Uh, I think I can just attack with, with both here. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's fine. I'm just... Play the merchant. He's going to trade here. Takes two. Takes another three. And then if we get lucky, he'll play some some artifact, you know, some enchantment creature or whatever that we can kill. Where's our bow? I haven't drawn that yet. That's, that's a good one. Perfect. So let's stop on our upkeep. Because we know we're going to kill that thing anyway. And I want to see what we draw. I don't think we have any black one drops. So we'll get rid of this guy. Um... Definitely don't want the swamp, and I guess we just take the disciple here. Like we can cast it next turn. So I don't know if you're gonna lose this game, bro. I'm almost out of gas here. Um, go ahead. One, two, three, four, five, six mana. He can... Yes, you are, you are on the ropes. I'll give you that, but... You also have four cards in hand and more mana than I do, so don't think we're quite to GG time yet. I've definitely lost from this position before. Yeah, so there you go, buddy. All right, so now we get to just attack him with both. Um, might as well. There's no point. I'm not bluffing anything here anyway, so... Might as well, just in case he blocks this edge scorpion. So he takes two here. And we do have lethal next turn, but like if he has another gray merchant, which is kind of what he was repping before, then... There we 
Erebos does not do it. In fact, it does nothing here. Okay, I think he's actually GGing me. Ugh, it's always so awkward. I don't know what to say. Because, like, if he wins from this point, like, ugh. I only say, well, I just never say GG, to be honest. I, people just take it weird sometimes, and it's just, like, not worth it or whatever. But I think he's going to kill himself. Yeah. <laughs> I admire you, sir. <laughs> All right, <laughs> so we got by our opponent in the first round. We'll see how it does in the second.